What's going on guys? In this video, I want to deep dive into Instagram stories. If you follow our channel, you probably know we are always focusing on making digital stuff look pretty and engaging. This video isn't going to be any different and we are going to look at how you can make Instagram stories that stand out by adding 3D animation to them with Photomotion. Now the question is, is it really worth spending your time on creating custom-made stories? Well, it probably is. According to Facebook, half a billion users use Instagram stories every day, so the potential reach is just huge. 40% of daily stories users have become more interested in a brand or a product after seeing it on Instagram stories, so it's definitely beneficial for businesses as well. Okay, so we're going to be animating this picture. I've specifically chosen this one because it is 9 to 16. So this is 9 to 16. So that will work quite well on Instagram stories. She will go in uh, one layer. This could go in another layer. And this is going to be the background. And we're obviously going to put a couple of text layers in between them as well. But let's just jump straight to Photomotion. All right, so this is how Photomotion looks like in After Effects. Double click on Start Parallax button. All we have to do here is double click on add background button just like this. Now we need to bring that picture into After Effects and from After Effects into Photomotion. The easy way of doing it would be going to File, Import, File and then find your picture, this one, click Import and now you can see it over here. So it is inside of After Effects, we just need to bring it into this composition down here and now we need to scale it down obviously because you can see it is quite large. So you do that by clicking on this little thing and dragging it over to this first layer. And that will allow you to use this scale attribute over here. So you just scale it down. Then we're going to close this composition. That will bring us back to this previous one. And our new button appeared over here. Now, as I said at the beginning, we're going to be splitting this image into multiple layers. And one of them is going to be her. And these things over there, that could be layer number two. She will be layer number one. And then background is background. So just double click on layer one. And now we can import that layer. Now, what we need to do here is bring that image in again. Now, as you can see, that image is way too big. What we have to do is scale it down. But because we already done that in a previous composition, in the background composition, we don't have to do it again. What we could do is just copy those scaling attributes back to this one. And you do that by clicking on this swirl icon again and dragging it over here. But there's one more thing you have to do before you release, and that is hold down shift on your keyboard and then release. And that is going to copy all of those scaling attributes to this layer as well. Right, so now we have this layer down here. So what we need to do is cut her out from that image. So everything else is basically transparent. There are many different ways of how you could do that. Uh, I usually recommend, you know, simple things like Roto Brush over here. So just click on that, make sure your layer is selected and then double click on that image, click OK. And then you can just start drawing lines like this and that should calculate an approximate mask for that image. If you release, it calculated this purple outline, which is basically telling you like, okay, that's going to be the mask. Now, if you spot any areas like this one, for example, uh, all you have to do is just hold down Alt on your keyboard and start painting and that's going to remove it from that outline. Now, there's little catch with Roto Brush. Uh, one thing you have to do is apply that Roto Brush so it actually applies throughout your whole timeline because otherwise it's just going to be applied on that frame where you created it. And there's a little cool trick for it. Select that layer go to layer and choose auto trace leave everything as it is and click ok give it a few seconds and that will create these points around that mask and it actually created two separate masks so if you hit m on your keyboard uh, it's going to open that thing down there not much you have to do here, um, only switching this none to add. And because this mask too is actually this area over there, so we're going to choose subtract because we want to subtract that area from the whole mask. And at that point, we can just delete this roto brush effect because we don't need it anymore. Right, so this is done. We can close it, get back to this main dashboard composition, and you can see there are plenty of new buttons and new areas that you can 
play with. Now, what I usually recommend doing is set up your layers first and then go to animation. Let's just double click on layer number two and let's do the same thing as we did with layer number one. So now we have her in one mask like this. Those things are in mask two. And then obviously background is a background. Not much else that we have to do here. Now, obviously there's layer three and layer four. This is for you to import either like a text layers or other things you would want in that image. I'm going to leave it like this for now because we're going to be focusing on this controller, which is for the animation. So let me just zoom in on this timeline so we know how long that animation should be. Something like three seconds is absolutely fine because we will enable boomerang later on in the process. So those three seconds are actually going to be six seconds. You can specify longer if you want to, which is basically just reversing your animation as it goes through those loops. Not much else you have to do here, really. If you are on that second three, all you have to do is just drag this controller wherever you want to. So for example, like this, and just click on that top part of the controller and then go to effect controls because we want to zoom in a little bit on that image. Now, all you have to do here is just drag this slider, which is the zoom slider. I guess something like this looks pretty nice. Now we can move it left, right if we want to. I mean, don't worry about these overlapping uh, areas like this. Gonna fix that in a bit. Let's just create some nice animation. I think something like this is nice. Click on this side button, which is rotation. Let's add a little bit of rotation to it as well. I think something like this looks pretty good. Let's just play this animation. Just go at the beginning of the time, hit spacebar, and this is the final result. Looks pretty nice already, but there is plenty of other things that I want to show you. Obviously, let's fix those big things first. And one of those things is this duplication going on over there. And another one would be these black edges. Let's just fix both. Now, because this picture is going on Instagram, we have this preset over here, which will create 9 to 16 resolution from it, no matter how much you rotate or zoom in, stuff like that. All you have to do is single click on it and then go back to your effect controls and click on this checkbox that will activate it. And then you can clearly see uh, it's kind of cropped those edges. Right, let's just focus on that duplication issue that I mentioned earlier. Now, you might be wondering why is that duplication happening? And it's happening because there's no way for Photomotion or for After Effects to know what was behind her when she was physically in that shop. There's an easy fix for this. What you need to do is just get back to that background, double click on that. So we need to remove her and fruit and these tomatoes from that image. The easy way of doing this would be by using clone stamp tool over here. So single click on it and then make sure that bottom layer is selected and then double click on that image. I will open this thing over here. And now if you hold down Alt on your keyboard, you can select your sampling area. Let's say this over here, single click and release. And then you can start painting those pixels back in just like this. Now let's make this image even better by adding some text behind her. Uh, you do that by basically going to any empty layer, which in this case, she is on layer number one. These things are all in layer number two, and then you only have a background. So layer number three and layer number four are still empty. So if we go to layer number three and put something there, let's just say we want to put some text over there. So I'm pretty happy with this text over here. Uh, you can always just go back to your main dashboard composition and just preview that animation to see if it looks nice or not. You might be wondering like, okay, fine. So I can put text behind them, but what if I wanted to put text in front of them? So let's say something over here. The way you go about that is basically putting that text into layer number one over here putting her in layer number two, putting these things in layer number three, and putting the final text layer over here to layer number four. Now, if you play this animation, you could clearly see that that text is kind of floating in front of her. Now, that gives it that really realistic 3D feel, and it looks really, really nice. Now, we can make it even better by enabling particles. So let's just go down here and single click on this button down there and click on activate particles. That's gonna enable full 3D particle system in that scene. Now you have plenty of other options with those particles. You can change their color over here, just like this. So you can make them brighter. If you just move it over here, it will be really, really bright. Or you could go to each individual particle layer down here 
and adjust positioning and scaling and things like that. One more thing that I would do here on this image is color correction, which happens over there. Single click on that and you can play with these curves over there to create some dynamic feel in that image. Now, obviously you can do other things here as well. Like for example, if you go to animation, there are plenty of settings here. But for Instagram stories, uh, this one down here is really important and that is boomerang. So with one single checkbox like that, you can enable boomerang. Now you can see this label over there. What that means is basically from your first frame to whatever uh, your last keyframe is. In, in our case, it's on third second. This is our main animation, but from third second to sixth second, that animation is playing backwards. So basically it's just reversed animation, that's all. And this is playing in continuous loop. So you can render out either three seconds, six seconds, nine seconds, 12 seconds, whatever. Just keep in mind these Instagram stories animations. Uh, usually I wouldn't go above like 12 seconds because it might get kind of boring. Now, I'm happy with this animation, so it's time to get it out of After Effects to its own video file so we can upload it to Instagram Stories later. Now, you do that by double clicking on this green button down here. This is your export composition. For Instagram, the only thing that you should be worried about is double clicking on this big section over there. It's going to open a new composition, and this is the actual composition that we're going to be rendering out from After Effects. Now, there are a couple of things here. Uh, the biggest one down here is basically telling you where you should make your cut in that video because if you render out this composition as it is it's going to render out everything including like this massive one minute chunk where nothing is really happening so we don't need that we only need either three seconds six seconds for boomerang or nine seconds and so on so we're gonna apply one of these numbers over here because they have been calculated for you by photomotion and we're gonna apply them to this section down here. So all you have to do is just hold down control on your keyboard and click on that time code, and that's gonna change it to frames. And what you need to do here is click on that and type 180, hit enter, and that is going to move your time head to that specific location where you should make cut in that video. Now, it's also gonna show you like, okay, if you cut that video here, we're gonna loop that video once. What that means is that your camera is gonna zoom in and zoom out, that's your one loop. Now, before we export this animation out of After Effects, it would be nice if we could add some additional elements to make this image even nicer. Just double click on that blue button and that is gonna open this effects library, which is included in Photomotion. And you can choose different things here. Light leaks will be nice so just double click on light leaks and then you can scrub the timeline to see live preview so i think for image like that something like this looks nice there's also another button over here click on that and you have other options here like vignette or lens distortion stuff like that so i think something like this looks nice now it's time to export this animation out of after effects and you do that by going to file export and clicking on add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. Now you might be wondering why we are not using this one, add to render queue, and that is because of the codecs that are available to us in Adobe Media Encoder that are not available inside of After Effects. And we're gonna need those codecs. Now it's gonna take some time for your animation to appear in Media Encoders. We need to change our codecs. So we're just gonna click on QuickTime. Now that's gonna open this window over here and you can choose your format and your preset if you want to. Now what I usually recommend for Instagram stories is choosing this one, H264, because I know that is gonna work on Instagram. Click OK. Your animation is ready to be rendered, but if you remember, I promised that I'm gonna show you different variations of this animation. Now, what I want to do here is just put a couple of price tags on, let's say on her back over there, on her hat and stuff like that. All right, something like this looks nice for that back. I also want to do, let's say, her hat. I think it should live on the same layer as she is, right? That looks pretty nice. Now, if you preview that animation, again, you can clearly see that that bag is floating in front of that bag actually, and the hat is kind of attached to, to the hat and top is attached to the top. Now, obviously you can do other changes as well, probably color. Let's just play with it and create something completely different. So it's just 
some greens to it as well. Now I'm quite happy with this look, it's kind of faded towards blue. Now that animation looks really, really nice, I'm really happy with it. Let's just double click on export again on this. In terms of uh, your boomerang animation, well, we already set that up earlier, so if you just go down there, it should be already looping one time, so that's fine. We do the same thing as we did before, so we're gonna send this to Adobe Media Encoder, and that's our second version. Now, I'm gonna do another one, uh, the last one, and that is gonna have something, uh, let's say, in between of her and those crates over there. Now, this looks really nice, I really like it, you can clearly see that that text is behind her. Now, double click on export, again, everything is ready to go, I'm not gonna go into details about this. Do the same thing, file, export, add to media encoder queue. Okay, that's done, now you just need to hit this button and that's gonna export all of your animations. I would usually recommend setting aside at least five to all the way up to 25 minutes per animation in terms of render time, so be prepared that it's gonna take some time. But after this, you should have your final video files ready to go on Instagram. So there you go. I hope you found tips in this video useful. I can't wait to see what you guys can come up with. Let us know by tagging at Integnity on Instagram. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.